of nine right now. If you've been thinking about buying a home computer for the holidays, you are not alone. Nearly half of the computers that will be sold this year are going to be sold during this season. Uh, but with the tremendous variety of models and uh, software, uh, words like fear and panic are really becoming as much a part of computer language as all those words like disk drive and 16K memory and so forth, floppies and so forth. With us to help figure out all of this and whether you want to buy, whether you might like to buy, whether instant buy, Fred Dignazio. He's written numerous books for computer users. He is the associate editor of Compute Magazine. It's a magazine for users of home computers. Morning, Fred. Morning, David. Now, Morning, I just kind of implied and said the confusion. I mean, among many of us, as we don't know what it means, there are so many of these gadgets, and we're hearing there's going to be a price war, the price are coming down, people are going out of business, there's a new one coming, wait! I mean, what's... what's Boy, is it complicated. Right, right. That's right. That's where, right. Where it is, it is complicated, and that's the first thing to recognize. The second thing is because everything's happening so fast, because there is an element of risk, and everyone has to accept that when you're getting into this market. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, people see computers as being like a freight train, and it's either going to run past them and they feel like they have to climb on, or they feel like the train's going to run them down. So what we have here this morning are a lot of computers that, to show you the easy route for children for mothers and fathers, for families and to really begin okay computing. it's really get started. If you can get started now, yeah. and, and it's okay to dive right. in, and you're not going to yeah, lose out in the long run. It's not necessary to climb on now, but there are easier routes, and here are some of them today. Great. Okay, what, what do you, you got? got there? What we have here to start with, uh, this is on loan from my four-year-old son, Eric. <laughs> and Eric's uh, given us his Teach and Learn computer, which runs about $50. And the key to this computer, David and Joan, is this little hard disk, it's like a record. And it's basically the heart and soul of all computers are the programs, that are really the activities that make a computer perform a function. So you put this little disk inside of the computer, and this particular exercise and activity is to teach the child about the solar system. And that's small and compact, easy to carry around. That's right. The child, yeah. it's very personalized because the child can carry it with them. All right, what about, the, this looks like a video game player up here, isn't it? Right, what we have here is a video game computer, the Atari, and the Atari last year was a very hot item in terms of video games. But video game sales have, have lagged this this year, and the software manufacturers realize there are millions of people out there who would still like to use this unit, so they're starting to make educational programs for families. All right, now that's what you call software, right? These okay. programs. And what that's we have software. here is a little game cartridge. It's not running just a uh, shoot 'em up game. It's a learning game from the Sesame Street people. About who, how much does that something like that cost? What, what this runs is. For the software itself is about twenty or thirty dollars, and for the kids controller it's about twenty dollars. Oh. And the controller you can take a plastic overlay that fits any activity. What we have here is Big Bird showing a child both how to move back and forth and catch the eggs, and also teaches counting. Oh, that's great! All right, that's let's say fifty dollar range, sort of. Now, is this what a real, honest to goodness computer? Right? What we have, what we have here, David, is our first full-scale, general-purpose computer. What we I wanted to show to the audience, just the bare bones, that when you first get a computer with no memory, uh, you have no software, then the computer is not going to run anything. We typed a, a message to it, Good Morning America. But if you start to want to acquire programs that allow you to do different activities on the computer, then you need something like a cassette recorder here from the manufacturer that runs a, a normal tape cassette, right. and you store your activity, your program, on the tape cassette. As an alternative, you have a cartridge, which stores, again, an activity on it, like word processing or a learning game. And then, more expensively, a disk drive, which we'll just begin talking about, that stores a disk. Well, That's what I so, want to know. I right. keep hearing about disk-driven All right, machines. now that one, though, you're just that keyboard you just showed us, though. That's about $100. So that, yes, you this, can get a this computer is representative. And, stuff, okay. and I would like to say right now that I recommend for families, as long as they understand for that price, they're not buying an activity or software. This is a great, inexpensive way to launch themselves into computing. And for the child, the keyboard can be considered like a playground. Let the child just roam around the keyboard and become familiar with the computer. Great. What if you want to get a little bit, I mean, this is disk driven, right? Yes, now we're, we're talking about a more full, uh, extensive system called the Commodore 64. And here we're entering a new realm, which is using a disk drive. And here's a picture of a disk drive. And the disk is, is much faster than a cassette, and it also allows a small child to use it. My son Eric, again, has been using it since he was small, and I think that's an average case. Can I do something with suggest like this? this is a disk goes here, right? Right. In there, but right this in is there. not part of that one. No. Right? right. Can I do this? Yes. What we have here, Joan, is an exercise to 
teach people who are not familiar with the keyboard to try to find the location of the keys. So I just watch for what letter is coming down, find it here. Right, and then you press the letter and you and try, try to get my little man across. See, those are great games, and yet they're learning at the same time. That's exactly right. And it's something that a child or an adult just learning about the keyboard can do and still enjoy themselves and become more familiar with the computer. Okay. Moving what else do we have here? We'll move on down. Okay. Step here. The next step is what is called a, a full computer system where you have the disk drive, but we've now added a new device, the printer. And the printer allows you to turn, along with the software, in this case the software is running on a cartridge, to turn your computer into an electronic typewriter. Want to try it? And what we need to do now, David, it says here that we typed out there are only 25 shopping days, which, of course, that's wrong. So can you enter the correct number of shopping days by first erasing on the screen? Okay, now I learned how to do this a few minutes ago. It's not <laughs> like I didn't know. Here. Okay, uh, delete one, what two. This? All right. I just took out, and, and now I'm going to enter 19 shopping right. days. My daughter Katie uses this on her book reports and I recommend it for children because it allows them to get away from the difficult way of changing all of their writing and it makes the details effortless so they can spend their time worrying about what they're creating. All right, why don't you show us what this last thing is because this is interesting. Koala pad? Right. What we have here, it's a new line of products that are like alternatives to the computer keyboard and it allows you to use music, our art. Now here we have already, here I drew a few minutes ago, with very little artistic ability, a Christmas tree. Now to add a Christmas tree ball, I'll grow a circle, which in this case is called a disc. Let's make it a purple Christmas tree ball by selecting a color from a menu here. I press the button on the koala pad, go back to my picture of the tree, and now I'm going to grow my little Christmas tree ball on the tree. I press the button down, and I move it out to the size of the Christmas tree ball I want, and I press the button again, and I create a Christmas tree ball. This is a, a very kind of basic computer, is it? Not? Another good one, right? Yeah. Yes, what you have here, it, this is representative of the type of computer like an Apple or an IBM PC that is commonly found both in the workplace, in the school, and, and also in the home. Mm. Usable. Fred, fabulous. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Learning. We're Thank getting you. there. Get over a fear of computers. 13 of. A uh, health tip from Dr. Tim Johnson after these words from Kodak, then Alex Karras, and Susan.